out, you could be leaving hundreds or even thousands of dollars on the table if your editing process is slow. If you're relatively new to editing, compare yourself to someone who will follow all five tips in this video, and I bet they can edit the same video two to four times faster than you. So to help you edit videos faster and stop wasting your time in DaVinci Resolve, I'll show you five things that you can do to speed up your workflow. All right, so the first thing that you wanna to do to save a ton of time is change your keybinds if you're not using keyboard shortcuts and you're just wasting your time. So usually you would click this blade tool, maybe cut it here and then move your playhead, cut it here, go back to the selector, delete it, and then move your clip. And that takes a really long time, but a much faster way to do it is by using keyboard shortcuts. So I already have them bound and I'm gonna show you how to do it in a second, but look, all I have to do is click one button, click another button, and I can cut it like that or click to cut it and then do that. And I'll show you exactly what I did here. So first I'm gonna show you how to set the keybind to splitting a clip. If you go into DaVinci Resolve in the top left, then go into keyboard customization. Now you see the search bar here. You just wanna search up Razor and it will come up here under timeline. You just need to click the drop down menu. And for you, it won't look like this. It will be set to the default keybind, which I don't know exactly what it is but you wanna basically click the X on it here and it's gonna pop up with a red outline. And once that's showing, you just wanna click the key that you wanna set it to. So I wanna set it to W because I use a W, Q and E to cut and bring the clip to the playhead, but you can change it to whatever you want. Now let's say I set it to W and W is actually set to something else. So for example, I'll set it to this random control to W as well. And since I already set the razor to the W key, it will pop up with this menu and I can either assign it and W will do both of those commands and sometimes that messes things up or I can just choose a different key. But if you have a key bind that's set to two commands or if you have a key that's set to two things, then you should probably get rid of one of them. Next thing I change is start to playhead. And when you search it up, there's gonna be drop down menus under ripple. Start to playhead, I like to set it to Q. And then I also do end to playhead under ripple again. And I set that one to E. And of course, when you change your keybinds, make sure you click save before you close out of it. Start and end to playhead is pretty simple. So first of all, W will split the clip and you can see it's split right here. And if I move my playhead, in front of the split, I can press Q to start to playhead, which basically does the exact same thing as if I pressed W and I cut it here, deleted this clip and dragged it back. So like this, that's the exact same thing as if I just pressed Q. I can just do that all in one button click. And I can do the opposite, which, and by that I mean moving to the other side of the split and pressing E, and it will bring the end to my playhead. Now, if I go into the keyboard customization again, I also have ripple delete set to R. So this one is basically if I isolate this clip here and I press R on it, it will just delete it and automatically bring the next clip back. So normally if I just clicked delete on it and I didn't click R, it would just do that and I'd have to drag it back. So that just saves a little bit of time as well. And notice how all the keys I'm choosing are very close together, which makes it really easy for me to do things fast. Last keybind I have set is fast forward. If you search up fast forward, I believe it's by default set to shift L, but I changed it to tab just because it's next to all of the other keys and I don't have to press two keys. Instead, I can just press tab. I can play the clip in two times speed. This just makes it really easy to go through like a talking head clip really fast if I want to hear like where they make mistakes and just cut it out easily using my other key binds. Now, the third thing is using plugins. It's going to save a ton of time and plugins are basically things that you can install into DaVinci Resolve and then drag and drop them. For for example, I have this plugin pack from Motion Array, link in the description if you're interested in getting this. Let's say I want to add a filter like this. Instead of doing it manually going to the color page and just like trying to get it exactly like this, I can just drag and drop it. Or for example, I have this topography background that I can use and I don't have to make it from scratch every time. Now, the next thing is called power bins. To enable power bins, you just click the three dots in the top right of this media pool and check show power bins. Now it's gonna show up and it's gonna be empty for you. It's not empty for me because I use these frequently and you'll have one master bin and a bin is basically a folder if you don't know, just what it's called in DaVinci Resolve. Now, within that bin, you can create other bins. So you can see I have client assets, I have 
film burns, I have sound effects, text backgrounds. Now let's take this film burn that I have and you can see I can drag it and drop it. So anything that you put in this power bin, you can access no matter what project you're in. If I, for example, click this home button, I'm not going to now, but if you open up a new project, you would still have this on your media pool and you can access anything that's inside it as long as you don't delete it on your computer because everything that you have in the bin here is linked to the same video file that's on your computer, of course. So just make sure you don't delete it or change the location. Otherwise, it's gonna say like media unavailable and then you can fix it by like clicking this link and then locating where it is on your computer. But now that I have this set up, for example, I can take this film burn, drag it in, and then use this film burn whenever I want in whatever project I want. And I don't have to worry about like finding it again. And this is also helpful if I wanna use like text effects, like for example, if I wanna use a specific font or I have this number counter, I can just drag and drop them and I don't have to create it every single time. So it saves me a ton of time. This could save you up to hours on end, depending on how long your project is. So you can right click on here and then click new bin and you can create your own bins. And I'll just show you, for example, if I want to take like an adjustment clip and I wanted to zoom it in and I want to use this zoom in effect. So I'll show you this as an example. If I want to bring in this adjustment clip and let's say I want this to be a zoom. So once I play this back, when the playhead goes over the adjustment clip, it zooms in. Let's say I want to use that effect a lot and I want to use it in multiple projects. So what I can do is just drag it into the power bin, make sure you have that selected or just drag it into this side here and then drop it. And then let's say I want to rename it to zoom so I don't forget what it is. Now, if I go into another project, I can access the same thing, drag it down and use it. The fourth thing is saving default presets in the Fusion page. So if you go on the Fusion page, you can see there's nodes that you can drag in. So let's use a really simple example. If I bring in a background node and plug it in here, this is what it is by default. And let's say for some reason that I always want my background notes to be blue by default. What I can do here is change it to blue. Then right click on the background node, go to settings and then save default. Now, when I delete it and let's say I wanna bring in another background node, it's gonna come in and be blue by default. And if you wanna reset it, just go back to settings, reset default and it will set it back. Now, before I get to the fifth tip, which in my opinion is probably one of the most useful ones, if you are a coach or entrepreneur of some sort with an offer and you know YouTube is gonna be a really good place to promote your offer, but you don't wanna deal with like editing, thumbnail design, or really anything on the YouTube side of things, then check out my website in the description. You can see how we could possibly help you and you can book a completely free 15 minute demo call with us. The next thing with Infusion is saving dot setting files and basically being able to drag and drop them, kind of like power bins, Except it's within Fusion. So to navigate to here, you just have to click on the effects tab on the top. Then under templates, you need to open it up, go to edit, and you can right click on empty space in the edit folder. And this will bring up your edit folder where you can see I have all of my dot setting files that I use. And when I have them in this folder, I can see them within DaVinci Resolve. Let's say I want to drag in this grid atmosphere. I just drag it in and then I get all these nodes so I don't have to recreate it every single time I wanna get a grid. So if I just connect them up, you can see I have a grid and I did not have to create it from scratch. I just created it once and I can use it in any project that I want. Now for saving these, let's say this is the first time you're creating it and you want to actually save it as a setting file. All you have to do is highlight these three nodes or just all the nodes that you want to use. Make sure you don't highlight the media out because you won't need that. Then right click on one of the nodes that are highlighted, go to settings and then save as. Now you can just name it whatever you want and save it to a place where you know you're not gonna lose it. Then we can just right click here, click show folder, locate the dot setting file wherever you saved it and drag it in this folder. As soon as you drag it into this edit folder, it will automatically show up at the bottom here. You're gonna have to scroll down to the bottom probably and you can use it wherever you want as long as you don't delete that dot setting file or move it out of that folder. Now with all these tips, you should be editing much faster, saving a ton of time and making a lot more money. But to get clients, you still need to stand out as an editor so that's why I'm going to leave a video on the screen that shows you how to edit like Iman Gaji in DaVinci Resolve.